Hello everyone, I hope you am audible. Can someone give me a feedback? You can you can unmute yourself and tell me that I'm audible. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So yeah, welcome to the second session, second live session. Um, we have discussed quite a bit of topics. Uh, in the past few weeks. So we had a meeting last time and till then we completed up to week four, um, four related equilibrium and we just started the extensive form games. And in week five and week six, we have uh, looked at the imperfect information extensive form game, which is which is an, uh, a more general representation of the extensive form games in the, uh, in the uh, perfect information uh, scenario, we know that every agent knows, uh, every player knows what has been played so far in the game. While in this uh, sort of in, uh, in perfect information game, we do not really know exactly what is uh, what has been played in the previous round. We know partially, but we do not know uh, completely. Uh, so uh, that is, that is uh, of course, taking into account the perfect information setup because uh, perfect information setup is one special case of imperfect information extensive form game, uh, where all the information sets as we have defined. So information sets are those nodes in the game history where the players, a particular player cannot distinguish between these uh, two different nodes. And there are certain rules associated with it. Um, uh, that is, they should be playing the same set of, set of actions in both these nodes should be the same. And uh, uh, in those information sets, if they are singleton, then that uh, falls back into the, the classical setup of uh, perfect information extensive form game. So we are actually looking at a more general setup. Now the question is, uh, how, what are the uh, different strategies in this imperfect information games? Uh, then there is a notion called perfect recall, and uh, then the equilibrium notions in IIEHs. So that is what we discussed. And then we slowly move into the Bayesian games. So Bayesian games are those kind of games where you do not know, the players do not know deterministically beforehand which games they are playing. Uh, so maybe you can just, uh, uh, I mean, if you have doubts, ask them and we'll go slowly over those lecture materials uh, again and see uh, how we can uh, resolve those doubts. So just a request that if you are not uh, asking any question, just keep yourself muted. But uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question, and uh, I can answer. Hello. Yeah. Dhanush, go ahead. You are asking something? Uh, okay, so Manojit asks brief about the defense attack. So, uh, which game are you talking about? Yeah, so just to clarify, feel free to ask. Uh, feel free to ask uh, any question, even from the previous weeks. Uh, we are having this uh, session right now uh, where we have completed up to week six, but uh, you can ask anything from week one to week six. Yes, this recorded session will be shared later. So I, yeah. OK, 
Okay, so the question is suppose attacker red column player, red or column player, okay, can attack either target A or target B, but not both. Okay, defender blue row player can defend either one of the two targets, but not both. Target A is three times as valuable as target B. Okay, so yeah, so this is a good question. So you are still talking about uh, the normal form games. So this is not an extensive form game. Um, uh, I believe that is the that is the case. Otherwise, there is no dilemma. So if the attacker, uh, the defender could know which one the attacker will attack or it can see, then it can take the corresponding defending action. The problem is interesting only when there is uh, there is a sort of a simultaneous move or uh, the one player does not know what the other player is doing. Okay, so let me draw the, the game situation in the uh, in Jamboard. I think I can show the screen. Yeah. So the, the screen is visible, right? Can someone give me a quick feedback if the screen is visible? Okay, so let me go back again. To... So uh, here we have two players. One is the attacker player and one is the defender player. And attacker, uh, so if um, attack target A, target B, and it can defense, defend A. So according to your question, if, uh, so if uh, uh, an attacker attacks and the defender was there to defend that, uh, that target, then uh, the, uh, I think the defender will win, right? That is the that is the assumption. Defender can defend it successfully, and uh, so let's say target A is three times as valuable as target B, which means that if you lose, so if if it is defended, we'll have to put some numbers, right? So um, if attacker attacks, and it was so uh, so let's say this this case, I think this this is the easier case first. So the attacker attacks, attacker chooses A, and defender. Uh, was protecting something else, it was protecting B, then clearly um, uh, we can see that the attacker will win and it will, uh, the, the, the second agent, that is agent two, the defender, will lose that three amount of, uh, or one amount of, uh, no, so this is target A, two. so target A is three uh, as valuable as uh, uh, target B. So I can just put this number minus three because that particular target was destroyed. So uh, if it was three times valuable, so defender actually lost it. Um, so this is the loss for this. And let's say attack is, uh, is plus three because it has actually conquered uh, for player one, who is the attacker, three times is the, uh, the value that it gets by destroying that. But if, it, if they defend, I mean, I'm just going to put, let's say zero and zero. So they do not lose anything, uh, but uh, the attacker does not gain anything, the defender does not lose anything. Just that, I mean, the let's say a terrorist was targeting a specific uh, a gate of the airport and it, the target was foiled. So yeah, so nobody has any benefit. Similarly, uh, if that is the description, then zero, zero. So when target B is attacked and also uh, uh, the defender was defending B, then again, the same thing happens. Nobody gains, nobody loses. Now B is, uh, so if uh, B was attacked and uh, the defender was defending A, so therefore, um, again, attacker will win. But this time, uh, because it, uh, its value is low, so it gets one and uh, player two, that is the defender also loses one. So this is the game description. So does that answer your question, uh, Monojit? Now you can ask, uh, various type of uh, other questions, right? So here you can ask questions of equilibrium, dominance, and all those things. So first of all, uh, so first give me a response that this game description is clear. I mean, from your um, description of the game, I have just written down a normal form representation of the same game. Uh, 
uh, is that the game description uh, clear? Yeah. So, okay. So maybe we can first answer the question that whether there exists any. Uh, so all the equilibrium concept that we have uh, seen so far. So dominant strategy. Uh, so is there any dominant strategy for any of the players? You can just unmute and tell me whether this is. You can see uh, any dominant strategy you have for any of these players with this playoffs. Anyone? Which one is a dominant strategy for it? For let's like, say player one, player attacker. Uh, let's say attacker is player one and defender is player. Yeah. So please, someone give me an answer. Which one is uh, which player? So let's say player one. Does it have any dominant strategy? And if yes, which one is a dominant strategy? So let me give you a hint. So player one, yeah, player one, but I'm asking what is the dominant strategy of player one? So what, what needs to be satisfied for uh, a dominant strategy? Dominant strategy says that no matter what the other player is choosing, uh, playing that specific strategy uh, strictly or weakly dominates all other strategies. Right? So that means that if, uh, if let's say we claim that player wants uh, dominant strategy is B, then what should happen is whether player two chooses A or it chooses B. In both these cases, the utility by playing B should have should be larger than utility uh, while playing A. So which means that this number should be larger than this number. And also this number should be larger than this one, which is not true. So that means that if the other player is choosing B, then uh, uh, this uh, uh, strategy B is not the best response. It does not, uh, it is not better to play B anymore uh, with respect to A. So therefore B does not dominate A. And similarly, you can verify that B does not, uh, A does not dominate B either. So the conclusion, therefore, is that uh, player one does not have any uh, dominant strategy, uh, weakly or strictly, because uh, this dominance says that no matter what the other player is picking, you should pick the same, which will give you a higher payoff. But there does not exist any such uh, strategy for, for player one. And similarly, for player two, there does not exist any such strategy for player two, which will dominate the other strategy. So therefore, neither player one nor player two has any dominant strategy, weakly or strictly dominant. Now, what about uh, the next uh, set of um, uh, concept, the next equilibrium concept that we discussed? What is the next equilibrium concept that we discussed in our class? Anyone? Okay, so they give you all the answers. Yeah, so pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Very good. So pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So can you tell me if there exists any pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this game? A B, okay. Um, why is AB a pure strategy? Okay, so yeah, we have given two answers, AB and BA. Uh, let's look at, so what is the requirement of a pure strategy? Uh, can you remember? 
I mean, the, uh, the purpose of doing this session over Zoom is to make sure that you can, you can ask questions over voice. So yeah, don't pretend that this is again the, uh, the usual uh, uh, YouTube live thing. So tell me which one is, uh, uh, yeah. So let's say your claim is AB, right? AB is the uh, pure strategy national group. So uh, what should you check to, to validate this claim? By deviating from the strategy, uh, player should not get a, any gain. Uh, by unilateral deviation, you mean, right? So for player one, so let's say if I write utility of player one, when it plays A uh, and the second player plays B, it should be at least as much as, so this was one of the conditions of Nash equilibrium that it should, uh, I mean, change this first strategy or any other strategy for all S1 in capital S1, that is the strategy set of player one. So which is comprising of these two strategies. The S1 in this, in this example is A and B. So for all the strategies that this other, this player one can choose while player two is holding on to its strategy B, there should not be any, any gain by this player. Okay, so let's check whether that, that happens. So what is the utility of player one when uh, this strategy profile A, B is played? What is the utility of player one when uh, this A, B is played? Three. Three, so this is the value, okay. And when it changes, so of course, A, A, S1 can take two values, A or B. A, in case of A, it is equal because it's the same. So B, so U1, B comma B, what is its value? What is the value of U1, B, B? Zero. Yeah, so this is this value, zero. Okay, so for this, the, the inequality gets satisfied. So here on the left-hand side, it was three, uh, which is greater than or equal to, in one case it is three, and the other case it is zero. Okay, so this inequality gets satisfied. Now, Nash equilibrium also says that for this second player, for uh, every player that should get satisfied. So A comma B should be greater than or equal to the second player, when player one is holding on to that strategy A, right? And player two can change to any S2. And this should hold for all S2 in capital S2. That is the strategy set for player two. So whether player two uh, deviates unilaterally from this uh, AB configuration to A, some other configuration. So one choice is of course B, in which case this equality will get satisfied, right? But uh, what about A, A? So player two can also play A. So what is the utility of player two when it plays A? So first of all, what is the utility of player two when it plays AB? I mean, this uh, configuration of AB is played. Uh, zero, it's zero here. No, no, so U2 AB, right? I'm talking about this left-hand side first. So player one is choosing A, the player two is choosing B. Minus three and zero. Yeah, so minus three is on the left-hand side. Okay. And this U2 AA is zero, right? So then this inequality is not valid anymore. So what can we conclude from this? So if it's this a, condition, yeah, sorry, yeah, go ahead. It, it's not a, a pure strategy Nash. Yeah, it is not a pure strategy Nash. So you can see even from this picture, if you want to look at it uh, pictorially. Uh, so player one is better off because he, by any unilateral deviation, it can only go to zero. But player two has a, has a, a beneficial uh, uh, deviation. So it can go to minus three to, to zero. And that is the reason it is making its, uh, uh, its uh, it is not an equilibrium anymore. Player two can deviate and get a get a better equilibrium. So therefore, this uh, inequality does not get satisfied for player two, and therefore, this is not a clear strategy.
So similarly, you can see the argument. I'm not going over this again. So for player one, it is better to play. So even for this case, B A, player one, ha player two has a uh, profitable deviation. So from minus one to zero, if it deviates, then it gets a better utility. So therefore, it is this uh, P A is not a pure strategy in equilibrium either. And clearly, you can check the other two cases. So here, player one has no profit. Uh, I mean, has a profitable deviation. So A A and B B are not uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium either. So this game does not have any pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So what is our next uh, approach? Uh, what we can guarantee? Let me go to the next slide and redraw this. Sorry, I was muted. I didn't. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So what I was going to say is that I have just redrawn that stuff, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, the the same game has uh, has two players and two strategies, and each of this uh, there are these utilities. Now, uh, what we uh, just checked is that this game does not have a dominant strategy equilibrium. It does not have a uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So, what is our next thing on our plate, which we, uh, which we typically do for for checking any unpredictable outcome? We check uh, the, the MSNE. The MSNE, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Okay, so that's that's our next approach. Uh, Now, mixed strategy in Nash equilibrium uh, is actually a little different from the, the from the problem description. I mean, the problem description, as uh, Monojit uh, wrote, is that uh, the attacker can either attack target A or target B, but not both. Uh, mixed strategy is something like a probabilistic choice. So uh, it can, with certain probability, tar uh, attack target A. With the rest of the probability, it can target B. So in some sense, that is the reason uh, the name is mixed strategy. So in some sense, we can think of that uh, that stuff as with certain probability p, the attacker is attacking a, and the the rest of the probability one minus p is attacking b. Similarly, the defender can defend with probability q and one minus q. Think about this as a as guarding. Uh, uh, your two entry gates. So maybe a secured facility like an airport has two gates to enter and some attacker is trying to attack and uh, the defender, so it can have a very uh, good uh, um, a set of uh, um, uh, a defending mechanism, either in one of this or the other, and it can probabilistically maybe on, on a specific day, it just um, decides by tossing the coin that which get it should cover, and based on these numbers, we can think of what is the what is the best response given that the attacker is also trying to maximize its safety. So the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium uh, gives uh, that kind of a uh, uh, kind of a guarantee. So just uh, reminding you what is this uh, utility. So utility of player i when it is choosing as sigma i. So sigma i is a, is a probability something like p and one minus p. I mean, I'm just writing it uh, in a shorthand notation. And sigma minus i is the strategy, the mixed strategy of all the other players. 
Now, this, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are at a specific uh, Nash equilibrium, in, uh, in that new strategy Nash equilibrium, then, and if uh, sigma uh, i star, sigma minus i star, is that MSME, is MSME, then this inequality should get satisfied, that this should be greater than or equal to the i of sigma i and sigma minus i star. So for every other strategy of the same player, for every other strategy of, the, of player i, uh, when the other players are holding on to their strategy sigma minus i star, uh, this utility should never be better off. I mean, this player cannot get better utility by choosing some other sigma i. And we have also uh, given a, a method how we can actually find this out, right? So um, this, this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, how we can find this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in an algorithmic manner. And for that, we uh, needed the, the characterization theorem of, uh, of mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Can someone remind me uh, the, the, the characterization theorem? So the characterization theorems tells you what are the conditions under which this can get satisfied. I mean, of course, yeah, so we had discussed certain examples, right? So let's say I just pick some random example. Let's say I'm mixing this uh, strategies with, uh, let's say two by five and three by five. I do not know whether these are equilibrium policies or not. But let's say defender is uh, mixing these two strategies, uh, the strategies A and B with this probabilities. So player one, uh, uh, attacker now can think of what is its expected utility when it plays A, right? So if player one plays A, what is the expected utility that it should get? Um, so let's calculate that. So utility of A, uh, right. so suppose this is my, yes, I'm using the same notation that I have used here. So and also in the notes. So this uh, probability distribution is nothing but sigma two, right? Some sigma two. And we are trying to find out what is the utility of player one, which is the attacker here. When it plays A, this pure strategy A, and the other player is playing this mixed strategy sigma two. This will be something like uh, sigma two times of that particular strategy, let's say A. So player two is playing A with a certain probability. And then I'm picking that uh, uh, this Q1 of A comma A. That is player one is playing A and the player two is also playing A, but I'm just multiplying that with the probability because it's not playing that deterministically, it is playing probabilistically. So, uh, but you will also have to look at what happens when it picks B. So this is the, the expectation that uh, you, uh, so if you have a random variable, in this case, the choice made by the defender is a random variable. Uh, you find the expectation of that random variable just by taking the weighted sum uh, where the weights become the probabilities of picking those choices. So you want A comma B, Right. So if we put these numbers, we know this is zero because this is u1 uh, a comma a, and u1 a comma b is this number. Right? So of course, this first part will be zero, and the second part will have this three by five times three, whatever that is, nine by five. Similarly, we can find what is the utility when it plays b, and that player is playing sig uh, sigma two as before. You can calculate this. Now you will multiply this number with this uh, value here. So two by five times one plus three by five times zero. So this time this becomes zero and this is two by five, right? So now, now if, you are, if you know, knew, if you are player 
uh, one and you knew that uh, player two is going to mix its strategy in this way, two by five and three by five. What action should you have picked? You know that the expected utility is nine by five if you play A. Uh, you know your expected utility is two by five if you play B. So what should you have picked? Yeah, someone please give me an answer. This is so obvious. Okay. A. A. So one point something. Uh, uh, nearly one. Two. Two is the utility. And uh, yeah. if, if we place B, then it is less than one. Yeah. I mean, it does not really matter how large it is. It's just that it is larger than that. So, of course, even if it was slightly larger, then also it does not make sense to play B at all because I can move. So instead of playing B or putting any probability mass on playing B, I can transfer all my probability masses to A and I can strictly be better off by, by doing this. So one of the necessary conditions of this characterization theorem, I mean, the characterization theorem gives you a necessary and sufficient condition. So uh, the necessary condition is that uh, when you are looking at this uh, Nash equilibrium, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, you should be indifferent between these two strategies. If A and B are both given positive probabilities according to the, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, then it must be the case that this expected utility must be the same. And in this case, in this choice, this is not the same. So we'll have to find out not this two by five, three by five, but some other Q and one minus Q for which these two numbers become same. So with this, let's say Q and one minus Q, that is sigma two tilde, some other uh, sigma two. And where, what happens, what changes? This part changes. This utility, uh, this uh, probability values changes, uh, but uh, the utility remains the same. Uh, so this will now be replaced with uh, sorry, Q. This will be replaced with Q. Because with this probability player, two is picking A and one minus Q. And the same thing will happen here as well. So this two by five will get replaced by Q. And of course, one minus Q, uh, well, it does not really matter because the utility will be zero anyways. That does not, that doesn't change. So uh, finally, there will be this uh, utility value will be Q. And here, this utility value will be one minus Q times three. And now we'll have to equate these two things. And that is exactly where we get this uh, answer. What will be the right uh, proportion for the defender so that both this uh, attacker choices, A and B, becomes the same. That is one of the necessary conditions of um, mixed strategy national. So let me just clean this up a little bit and see what, what we got. We have this utilities here and here. And we now equate one minus Q times three equals Q. Uh, we can just find this value. So Q by one minus Q becomes three. Uh, and that is two by four. So two by five is not the right proportion. Three by four is. And therefore, one by four. Now you can do the same calculation and you can see that one by four times three, this will be three by four and three by four times one. So attacker now becomes indifferent between A and B. Okay, so th this gives me the uh, the proportion with which the defender, uh, the, uh, the mixed strategy in Ash equilibrium will be for the defender. Now we'll ha also have to find that P and one minus P for which these two choices A and B becomes uh, the same, but utility wise, they should be the same for the defender as well. So for that, we'll have to uh, multiply this one minus P with this number minus one. And we'll of course, uh, P times zero, which will, which will end up in zero. So therefore we'll have on one side, we have minus one times one minus P. And on the other side, this p multiplied by minus three, that is the expect in this two terms when you uh, multiply and add, that will give you the utility, uh, expected utility for player two uh, when he's playing b. 
So minus three times p and one minus p times zero, which uh, disappears. So now you can do the same same exercise again. Uh, so p by one minus p will be one by three. So which means p will be uh, one by four. So one by four and two by four. That is the proportion with which three makes three. And there also you can see that one if one by four and three by four. This is minus three by four, and this is also minus three times one by four, which is minus three by four. So player defender is indifferent between these two choices. Attacker is also indifferent. So therefore, finally, you can say that uh, what is this uh, mixture equity Nash equilibrium in the context of this game? It is uh, for player one one fourth, comma three fourth. This is sigma one star, and sigma two star is three by four, comma one by four. sigma two star. And this is the mixture equity Nash equilibrium. I think one of the Assignment questions gave a problem like this, and uh, you will have to apply the characterization theorem of uh, uh, mixed rate in equilibrium in order to find this mixed rate in equilibrium. And we also know that this mixed rate in equilibrium always exists due to Nash's theorem. So, therefore, for any such kind of a finite game, we can always find uh, a mixed rate in equilibrium. Okay, so that is uh, one complete dis discussion on this attacker and defender game. Uh, good that one just could give, a, give an example. So the, the follow-up question is that which target is red to attack and which target is blue to defend? So there is no clear answer to this, right? So you can say that this is the probabilistic guarantee that it is best for the both the attacker and defender to attack or defend uh, with this probability because there is no pure strategy equilibrium here. There is no dominant strategy. So the, uh, the kind of prediction will, be, uh, will not be as simple as we did for, let's say that um, agriculture and, uh, and warfare game for the neighboring kingdoms. So here we cannot say which target rate to attack. So, Maybe you can say that uh, every time when the attacker wants to attack, it can toss a coin with probability one fourth and probability three fourth. It's a biased coin, and if it turns out to be head, it attacks. Uh, it chooses uh, to target A, um, uh, attack target A uh, with probability three fourth. If it comes to be tails, then it uh, attacks target B. And similarly, the defender's optimal policy is to uh, defend target A with probability three fourth and uh, defend target uh, B with probability one fourth. So the answer is not in deterministic terms, it will be in probabilistic terms. Does that, uh, does that answer your question? I mean, if you, if you want, you can actually correlate this with uh, with some real world examples. So, um, if if you know, so for instance, um, uh, even in airport security, uh, if there is patrolling team, it is quite randomized that which place they should protect, because uh, if uh, if the attacker knows uh, for sure that this particular um, uh, entry gate will be protected, then they will definitely attack the other thing, right? So it is it is clearly not optimal to uh, protect any of these gates in a deterministic manner. Rather, if it is probabilistic, uh, then attacker do not know what is the outcome of that probabilistic draw, and therefore it cannot design a policy of attacking this or that. They will also have to come with uh, some uh, some attacking policy like this randomized policy. And of course, there could be some outcomes where uh, attacker attacks and the defender also is able to defend. And there'll be some cases where this, uh, uh, the thing, I mean, the attacker attacks and the defender could not defend because it uh, chose the other gate to protect. But in expectation, uh, the utility will be the highest for, for, uh, for both, the, both the players. 
So that is exactly what the mixed strategy in equilibrium is going to be. So, good example. Uh, I think you should do more problems on the strategy in equilibrium and uh, sort of build up the the, uh, the understanding and uh, the feeling what this. Uh, uh, this week's strategy has to be really good. Okay. Uh, okay, so the the next question is: I should assume many agents are operating in the same environment, each faced with a different optimization problem. Uh, yes, exactly. So every, every agent is uh, that is why it is called a multi-agent optimization problem, right? So game theory is not like uh, the classical optimization where you have exactly one agent who is trying to maximize. It depends, the optimization problem depends on what the actions that has been chosen by the other players. And therefore we do not talk about optimal solutions anymore. We talk about equilibrium solutions. And this is exactly what all these equilibriums are, uh, are dealing with. We should be uh, choosing an equilibrium outcome and that is the predictable outcome. Not a, there is no optimal solution, so to speak. Um, so you can, uh, in fact, increase the number of players. Of course, it will not be as simple as uh, two variables. So for instance, if you had the three players here, and then you could not draw it in, in, the, in the two dimensional plane uh, like this matrix, but uh, um, the, the principle remains the same. Uh, whatever uh, probability distribution you are assuming for the other two players, your expected utility, uh, so let's say, I have, let me go to the next slide. If you are thinking about, I think the question is more about how you can generalize this whole idea for more than two players. So what I uh, say there is U1, now I have uh, a sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three, because there are three players. Okay, so then uh, whichever, uh, whichever strategies are in the support of the sigma one. So remember, support of a, of a probability distribution is those set of strategies for which this uh, sigma one is uh, putting some positive probability. So this is that, um, yeah, so collection of those strategies, if you want to call it, smallest, meaning capital S, such that the corresponding Q, uh, sigma one of that S1 is uh, positive. We know that it will be non-negative, but uh, we are identifying only those uh, strategies where the probability mass is positive. So this is called the support. So uh, in the previous case, we saw that there were two strategies in the support. I mean, we have uh, created different supports. We can create multiple supports uh, and we can check whether this uh, the mixed strategy national condition is getting satisfied or not. So uh, if you want to write it, so let's say I have uh, two uh, actions like, like the previous one. Player one is playing this pure action A and these other players are picking pure uh, mixed actions, sigma two and sigma three. How should we write it down? Uh, it is, uh, you can write it down as sigma two is two, sigma three, S3, so this lowercase S3 is the strategy that has been hit by this, uh, this player three. And then you are taking the utility of player one. When it is picking this action A, the player two is playing action S2. So these are pure actions, S2 and S3. And then you take this summation over this S2 and S3. S2 living in capital S2 and S3 living in capital S3. Right? If this is the uh, this is the utility, so of course there will be uh, if each of these players have two strategies each, there will be four such terms. We will be multiplying with this and uh, uh, and uh, then um, find the corresponding utilities. So that uh, gives you the expected utility. Now you will have to again find u one uh, b of sigma two sigma uh, uh, sigma three and find it in a very similar way. And then you will have to equate it because this has to be the same if you are in the, uh, in the mixed strategy natural. 
very naturally there will be more variables now because earlier there was only two variables, one variable uh, which we could solve, but now there will be two variables and they will be multiplied together. So it's a nonlinear optimization problem, but it's it's also a good exercise to see what happens if you have three players and uh, what will the mixture of the natural but it is entirely doable. The, the whole exercise that we did for uh, two players, it can uh, go on to uh, three players or even more players. So other questions? Uh, let me just get back to this. Yeah. So there are many, in fact, uh, yeah, so uh, this week, I think week six uh, video lectures are, are uh, released. So there you can actually see the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Uh, there is one module on peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. The way all this, um, uh, the P2P file sharing uh, uh, client works. So most uh, prominent, most popular is BitTorrent, how BitTorrent works. So if you look at that BitTorrent uh, uh, setup, it's essentially doing a kind of a, um, a prisoner's dilemma game. It is playing a prisoner's dilemma game in a repeated manner. And because of that, uh, uh, that kind of a modeling or that kind of an algorithm, it is ensuring that all the, uh, there are seeders as well as leachers. So everybody does not become a leecher, if you are familiar with that terminology. So I suggest that you look at that uh, uh, that specific example. Uh, this is module number module number 28. So it's the entry in practice P2P file sharing. So there, there is this uh, very concrete example. There are many examples in the uh, context of mechanism design. Of course, these auctions are the most prominent examples, but beyond auctions, there are um, fair allocations and uh, um, and various other contexts of so crowdsourcing where uh, game theory and mechanism design ideas are used and um, yeah so that's that's some of the practical implementations um, but you'll be able to understand those things once you have gone through uh, this process of uh, understanding what is an equilibrium and what are the different types of games like normal normal form games, extensive form games? Because if you want to uh, design a, an optimal algorithm or a good algorithm for a game like tic tac toe or chess, then you will have to understand what an extensive form game is. And that is the and that was the content for week five, uh, in fact, week four and week five, uh, mostly discussed about uh, extensive form games. The practical implementations are many. Okay, so yeah, so please uh, uh, yeah, ask if there are any other questions. We are also coming almost to a close. Oh, what is the idea behind revenue maximization option with no free disposal? We are way far behind that to answer uh, in, in any um, reasonable or understandable way at this point. So let's hold on to that question. When we discuss revenue maximization, we will uh, we'll, uh, discuss that. So any other questions on these topics that we have discussed so far till week six? Okay, so if there are no other questions, we can close this session. Thanks to everyone for joining. And uh, yeah, thanks to uh, Inpital for me for allowing me to uh, have this real live session. Though many other people did not completely use the, the full uh, 
spoke of this uh, live session, you could have asked direct questions rather than typing it in. But anyway, so yeah, so we'll do another session soon um, when we uh, cover a few more uh, weeks. All right, thank you. Thanks everyone.